Well, if I can find a few extras from somewhere, <laughs> I'm gonna love it. The backlash makes me horny. We're up for the banter. It's a comedian. Hello, welcome back to that Josh James show with me, stand-up comedian Josh James. Uh, no white boy today as he's off laying tiles somewhere in Romford or Collier Row or fuck knows where. Um, but I'm delighted to say we're joined by superstar boxer John Ryder. How's it going, John? It's good. A superstar. I've never heard that before. Uh, do you know what, mate? As soon as I said that, superstar, I was thinking, I don't think he's going to like that. I'll take it, man. You'll so, take yeah, it. <laughs> why not? <laughs> but you seem like... You know, like when you see boxers, I see you all get all sort of different types of uh, of boxers, different type of characters. You've obviously first time meeting you today. You've always struck me as someone who's like calm and collected. Yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's the best way to be. Just let you you ain't got to talk up these fights. You and yeah. you can just prove it on the night in the ring and just let you let your uh, your fight and do the talking. I think that's more intimidating, to be honest. Like, the silent assassin. Yeah, exactly yeah. that. Like I always think. If I see someone like me in a bar, who's a bit of a fucking big mouth, I think he's going down easy. You know, yeah. I'm always worried about it. I'm always worried about the quiet ones. Yeah. You know what I mean? So no, it's true. Yeah, you think, if, if you're getting chased by a group and all, turn around and smash the fastest one in the face because he's the one that can't fight. Yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's the one that's yeah, coming like on. second or third. He can he can scrap. So just turn around, do the first one, then have it in toes again. Yeah, spot on. So uh, obviously you're fresh off your fight with Canelo. Yeah. How was that, mate? Good. Um, just nice to have some some time with the family yeah just unwind deload and just just i suppose look back on what you've done and you wasn't really meant to reach these heights so to have, to have achieved that and reach that ultimate goal of fighting someone like canelo it's for me for me it was a dream come true in the fight come about after all the the hiccups made in my career so far yeah i mean you've obviously always been been a top top fighter but you know, throughout your career, you've had your losses, haven't you? Yeah, I've had, had a few blips and fights that I should have won and didn't get a decision. I mean, we've seen it again this weekend with another fight, the same thing, close fight, and it's gone completely the wrong way. But it happens in boxing, but it's all made for a better story in my career, I feel now. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And I always think, I think boxers sometimes, they're so worried about that, oh, keeping that, yeah. that you know. And, and actually... I think that's detrimental sometimes to people's career. They're so worried about fighting certain people that actually it makes me, when they're trying to protect their unbeaten streak so much, it makes me lose interest in them. You know, I, I want, you know, you, with you, John, you've always fought, you've always been prepared, I think, to have those fights. You, you don't seem like you've been scared of getting in there with anyone, really. No, see, I want to I wanna fight the best out there. And if, listen, if you can't short, it happens, it's boxing, it's two men fighting at the end of the day mm. and, and there's going to be a winner and loser. I mean, I think it's that era of like Floyd Mayweather coming around 50 and over retiring. Yeah. But you look at Julio Cesar Chavez, um, he went, I think he went 69 and 0 mm. and then lost his 70th fight and people seem to forget about that. He's, he's obliterated Mayweather's career, do you know what I mean? But yeah. he's got that loss and it doesn't define him as a fighter. He's still gone on to have a fantastic career and achieve near enough everything that Mayweather did. Yeah, and I, th I think, do you know what? I think exactly that. Mayweather sort of clouded a lot of people's judgments in terms of, he, well, he always made such a big thing about yeah. being unbeaten. And I think a lot of boxers look at that and they're like, you know, if, if, I've, if I do have one loss in my record, say for example, that they're going to somehow lo lose credibility. But I think actually to real fight fans, you know, that's not the case. No, I sound like I'm really bashing him over there as well. I, I absolutely love him. Like yeah. as a fighter, he was like, if I could have a career like anyone, it would have been like him. But yeah, yeah it's not the be all and end all of boxing. I don't think. I yeah, think. but your style is a lot different to, to Mayweather's. I say, like, I mean, how would you describe your style? I suppose like aggressive. Yeah, aggressive southpaw. Yeah, and like I've seen you in a lot of tear ups. Yeah, you know, whereas with Mayweather, <laughs> it well, it's just like him is like hit and not get hit, isn't it? You know. Yeah, do you know, it was within the early doors in his career when he was pretty boy Floyd. It was more uh, beating people up. Do you yeah. Know what I mean? Then when he went through the hand injuries, niggles and whatnot, as he got older, he adapted his style more to the, the money over and he was more defensive. Mm. Like. So he, he he can do both. Yeah. So how did it start with you? Obviously, you're from Islington. Yep. Am I right in thinking like your family are Irish? Yeah, dad's Irish, mum's English. Yeah. Um, and... Yeah, just always love boxing, sitting at home with my mum watching Ben Eubank on the on the ITV back then. Yeah, did you ever get like in fights in school when you're like, I'm pretty fucking good at this? Uh, 
So I had one fighting score and I remember like just seeing everything coming and rolling under one, rolling under another and like yeah. hitting him with a, another shot and I thought, like, I, thought, I just thought I watched too many films. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, no, no, just always loved boxing. So yeah. it's, it's a natural thing to get into. Yeah. Like, just, I didn't really know of any gyms about. So my dad knew um, Spencer Oliver's dad, Jim Oliver, and he said he's got a gym in Barnet, which was quite a slog up the road, I mean, an hour every day there and back. But um, it was worth it. Then I found a gym near home. The Angel went there with my mate, Ben, and um, that, was, that, that was it. I got the bug. So why that, is that my father-in-law's from Islington? Yep. And his, his parents were uh, both Irish. Yeah. Seems to be a lot of Irish moved to Islington. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I suppose the um, the move from County Kilburn, wasn't it? Is that where your dad's from? <laughs> no, he's not from Kilburn, but I've just there. Kilburn was a massive Irish foothold, I'd say, wasn't it? Oh, oh yeah, what in North London? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm thinking, where the fuck's <laughs> County Kilburn? <laughs> County <laughs> Kilburn. <no. laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh mate, that's how that's how bad my geography yeah. is. I'm like, no, I'm, but like my like great <laughs> grandparents, whatever, they're Irish. They moved and then they moved to the East End. So I know like the East End is like a big hotbed for, for Irish people. But Islington seems to be, it's just, I, everyone that I know that has been from Islington, they've had Irish family, you know yeah. what I mean? I think it's more Holloway in Kentish Town. Yeah. Lot, lot, still a lot of Irish there, yeah. Yeah. So you got, so you went to, you ended up at the Angel Boxing yeah. Gym. What sort of age was it you went into the boxing gym? I f started off from the first one, I was about 12. Done a few years at the Finchley, yeah. travelling there and back, day in, day out. Um, Put some mileage on the cars, and was it was it like apparent straight away that oh, he's he's good this kid? You know? What I mean? No, not at all, not really. No, I, um, funny enough, I started boxing. I got better at football. Oh really? Like, I think I just got fitter, yeah, more yeah, stronger, yeah. more belief. Um, but never never good enough to pursue something with football. Never good enough to play for Arsenal. Never good enough to play for Arsenal. No. Not many are. are they? You were fit well. A few seasons ago, you might have got it. Yeah. <laughs> I thought, I thought I would get a call now. up at one point. Yeah, not now though. Yeah, definitely not now, mate. You're you're the team, aren't you? Yeah. Um, okay, and so like, so what? Twelve, thirteen. At what point was it becoming? Did when you was an amateur? Did you win any like national titles or anything? Yeah, won two national novice titles. Right. Um, back to back years, and then my first year in the ABAs, I came up against George Groves. Oh really? Yeah, won the won the semi final and boxed him in the final and, and lost on points. So oh. just a just a terrible luck of the draw, really. Yeah, yeah, I mean? yeah. He'd yeah. gone and beat the gal the year before. He was the reigning champion. It was right. like just you've, you've come in against one of the the country's best. Yeah, and was he regarded that at that point, George Groves as everyone like he's he's yeah he's, he he, he was the talk of the town and he was the the next best thing. Yeah, you didn't never fought George Groves in your pro career, did you? No, never. Um, when I won the the final eliminator for the WBA, he was fighting Callum Smith. Right. So obviously Callum Smith beat him, and I boxed. The, well, I think it was a year down the line, ended up boxing Callum Smith for the title. Yeah, and I mean, well, should have won that, shouldn't you? Yeah. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what can we do? Dodgy decision, but yeah. there you go. And then when, uh, like, so when you're an amateur, at what point do you think to yourself, right, I'm gonna go pro? I, I was sparring pros before I even had an amateur fight. Really? Which was cheating at the game, really. No, I think I'd had one amateur fight. Um, but really, I was just cheating at the game. Yeah. I unlocked their codes before. Yeah. Um, but it was just a great education, sparring all the pros. and just What sort of pros were you fighting when you was an amateur? Um, sparring, like I said, Dave Walker, um, Matthew Furwell, mm -hmm. Billy Cockwin, A lot of lighter weights. Yeah. I mean, I was only 15 at the time, sparring yeah. them. Um, Fair enough, that's how I met Tony Sims in the gym. Yeah. With, with Darren Barker, he was sparring. And have you been with Tony Sims your whole career? No, he's, he's managed me my whole career. Right. But, um, I had another coach, Colin Lake, who was a, a, a live wire. Um, <laughs> a hot, bit of a hothead, but a great teacher throughout the early stages. And when you went pro, was you with Matchroom straight away? No, I had, um, what did I have? I had, I, had a f I had my first fight on a Hennessy sports show. Mm. And then... Um, then we went on the road onto a good win show and yeah, just I think I was about five and oh when I got signed by Matchroom. Right. Five no, six no, yeah. I can remember one of your earliest fights. I think it might have even been like your eighth fight or whatever. And I remember watching you and I don't know how many people have said this to you before, but I'm just like, that geezer just fucking looks hard. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. obviously your na your name is Gorilla. Yeah. And you do look like, a, you just look fucking hard, you know what I mean? Yeah, and I can remember watching that and I was like, this guy's, this guy's tough, you know what I mean? And I thought, you know, watch, watch your career throughout. So to see you go, 
you know, the wins, but then to have your hiccups, like you said, your losses, yeah. and then to go on to fight Canelo, who really, you know, pound for pound, yeah. number one legend of the sport. I mean, when I was watching that fight against you, against Canelo, one thing I noticed is you walked in, and for those that, that don't know, it's in Guadalajara, which is his hometown. Yeah. 50,000 people, I think it is. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think, um, near, near a 60 in the end, I think. Near a 60. Yeah. And. Clinging on here, aren't I? Trying to get more and more. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You'll be like Carl Frotsch. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? I think yeah. it was 80,000 yeah. actually at Wembley. <laughs> but, um, I just remember watching it and thinking it was a hostile reception that you come in with. Yeah. But actually, when you left that ring, people were cheering you. But it's exactly how I said it would go. Like I knew, I knew that would be how it went. I'd, I'd walk into booze, but leave to cheers. And listen, obviously, I expected to get yeah. the win and, and it to end up differently. But it was kind of like a bittersweet moment. Yeah. I'm fighting probably one of the generation's best pound for pound fighters out yeah. there. But you obviously can't short. I've obviously got the excuse of a broken nose as to why I didn't perform to my to my fullest. But I think I showed the heart of a lion. Yeah. Why there are tons of fans in, in Mexico and, and hopefully back home. I mean, you broke your nose against Canelo in the second round? Second, last punch of the round in the second round. Uh, how much did that hurt? To be honest, it didn't hurt. It was more the noise of the crunch when he really? actually landed it. I felt it. What got in your head? Yeah, that, the noise of the crunch in my head. And I thought... That's definitely not good. I've never had nothing like that before. And just, just instantly as I let up, I felt the blood start, not so much pouring down my nostrils, but pouring down the back of my throat. Yeah. And it was a bit like, oh, this is, this is strange. Yeah. Never felt this before, yeah. Does that make it hard to breathe? It's horrible to breathe, yeah. I sat down on the stool, ended that round, and it was not so bad. But then as the rounds went on, it was like, I ended up having to stand up because I was like, I just can't get, a, can't get a breath in through my nostrils. And I'm like trying to, grasping from my mouth and it's just not happening it's not happening fucking hell do you know what because I was listening to uh, I knew you broke your nose I didn't know it was in, as early as the second round and I listened to a little interview uh, that you was doing after the after the fight as I was getting ready for today and as I heard you say you know it broke in the second round yeah. and you fought for that entirety of the fight with a broken nose I'd stubbed my toe and I was on the deck for about 10 minutes. <laughs> and I'm just like, like, I was in agony. Yeah. And I'm like, how, how on earth do you go on for 10 rounds with a broken nose? Is that just like adrenaline? But the stub toe is a different gravy, isn't they? Oh, mate, stub, this is it. I would yeah. actually argue that maybe the stub toe is worse than a broken nose. Well, I've done I'm it before, hit. like passage football in mum's house. Yeah. Go to, keep the, go to volley the ball and just hit the corner of the wall. And it's yeah. like, yeah. And then you go down, yeah, mate. I'm so, running around like Ronaldo. But listen, maybe I could, maybe I could fight Canelo. Who knows? Uh, no, yeah. As long as you don't stub your toe on the step <laughs> yeah. or something, get into the ring. Do you know what I mean? That's like my, that's like my Achilles' heel, <laughs> yeah. stubbing the toe. Um, but was it hard? Well, like, was the adrenaline going throughout them ten rounds? Did you not really feel it? It was just more in your head. You're like, I think I broke my nose. Yeah, it's weird. I'd, I'd worked with a good friend of mine, Greg Meehan, because I remember in my fight previous that I said I didn't feel like I was focused enough walking to the ring. So I wanted that's something I wanted to address, and yeah. I didn't want to go into the biggest fight of my career not being fully focused on the moment, not being there in the moment, because I f always feel like I'm living in the future and like, what's next, what's next? And mm. never really taking time to live in the moment and in the present. So I, I started working with him 20 weeks out from the fight and just, just working with, with this fight in mind. And it was like, he said to me, when you, when you go to the press conference, you need to take pictures of the stadium, take pictures of the arena and like the ring walk, um, where you'll be staying, just make yourself familiar with that. And every night after that, we went into like a, a deep breathing thing and then we'd go into like a visualization. So in my mind, when it's fight night come around, I'd been to that stadium a hundred times before. Right. I've done that ring walk to the ring a hundred times. I've thrown the punch in the first round and, and, and seen my hand raise at the end of the fight. So most of the visualization worked by the, the hand raising at the end. Mm, I mean, but wait, I mean, obviously it was 12 rounds you went with Canelo you didn't, you know, you didn't get the win, but you almost come out of there as a winner because not a lot of people go 12 rounds with Canelo, look as brave and as tough as what you do. You know, I can't remember exactly the rounds that, that you got knocked down, but even when you got knocked down, you're coming back up and you're, you know, 
you've, you've, you're coming back with as, as much as you was before, you know, yeah. um, which is just, it was just like unbelievable to watch. When you said you was coming out and obviously doing all that visualisation and stuff, obviously you're probably getting quite a bit of stick when you're on your walk, ring walk. Oh, yeah, yeah. How much, how much is that getting in your head? Well, to be honest, I, um, I watched it back the other day. I watched a video of the ring walk and you could hear all the booze, but in that moment, I didn't hear none of that. You heard cheers. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I heard my bit of ring walk music they played extra quietly. And yeah. just honestly, I didn't hear none of the, the booze or the... Did they play cheers. it quietly? Mate, it was like, his ring walk music was like... yeah. Massive. We Mine had about 150, like, yeah. whatever you call them, like and Mexicans <laughs> playing yeah. the guitars with yeah. their hats on and that. Yeah. But yeah, and what ring music did you come out to? I had uh, Chase and Status, which was a, a good little tune. But yeah, it, that's it, the thing, because I was watching it earlier, I think, what ring? I couldn't hear yeah. it. Yeah, didn't give it the, uh, the airplay it deserved. But could you hear that, obviously, when you're coming out and you're getting a stick and you're getting the heckles, can you understand what they're saying? Because they're saying it in Spanish. Nah, it's just like all that puta and stuff, in it? Like, yeah. Puta. But, oh, really? Nah, what does that mean? Uh, bitch. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 50,000 people yeah, calling you a bitch. bitch. Yeah. <laughs> well, to, funnily enough, mate, I've had a, I've had a few gigs where, uh, you know, it was not too far off that, to yeah, be honest. Yeah, I can be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Call me all sorts, wank, you know. So, uh, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Um and uh, what do you think makes Canelo so so good? You know, like makes him a legend of the sport. Uh, I don't know. He's just got that star power, hasn't he? Um, but when you're in the ring with him, is it, what, how would you play against everyone that you fought? Do you, I mean, did he give you the toughest test, do you reckon? Uh, yes and no. I mean, it's hard to say because obviously the, the nose injury so early on mm. uh, really did change my my tactics in the fight. But he's what's makes him stick out from the rest is his timing and his, his thinking. He's always, even when you think you're having success with him, he's assessing what you're doing to mm. set you up, lay a trap and let you fall into it. You know yeah. I mean? And that ring, I mean, if people have not watched it, go go watch it after this chat because that ring just seems so small. Yeah. Did you know it was going to be that small? It was meant to be a 20 foot ring and it ended up being like 18 foot, I think. Would you think that suited you more? Yeah. Mm. If the nose hadn't gone. If the nose I, hadn't yeah, gone. I'd love to have been on the inside with him. And when I was on the inside, I had a lot of success up close, yeah. but just couldn't sustain anything because I'm coming out trying to like gasp a breath and, yeah. and get some dammy. But listen, the, the, the experience was something that I, 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 for a long time, I only dreamed about with, yeah. all the, with all the blips in my career. So to actually say I've been there and done it was like a, a massive feat for me in itself. And how'd you go from, I mean, I assume you was a fan of Canelo before. Yeah. How'd you go from being a fan to then actually, right, well, he's my competitor now? To, to go from that mentality to, to that mentality and to not be in awe of him a little bit, you know what I mean? I've been, I think I've been quite fortunate because I am first and foremost a boxing fan. So yeah. when it came about, I was fighting Billy Joe. I was, I was a fan of him from the Olympics. Mm. Um, Kenneth Smith, the same. I, was a, I was a, watched a lot of him for the amateurs, uh, early step in the pros because I, I didn't see him where is the white weight brother at that time I didn't see him as a rival at the time so I watched yeah. a lot of his stuff I was a fan um, and then Danny Jacobs I was a massive fan of his and had a lot of admiration for his his story what with battling cancer and whatnot. so mm. that held me in good stead and obviously the visualisation stuff really helped because I, I just didn't see him as Canelo I see him as another opponent when when you're out in Mexico I see a lot a lot with like users with armed guards and all that yeah. sort of stuff getting like what's it called convoys yeah the armed escorts yeah really because there's a lot of kidnapping happens over there haven't they do you know what that was everyone's like massive worry, worry like oh don't bring our family out there because they get kidnapped yeah. and it's like I went there for a press conference I think seven or eight weeks beforehand and didn't get an uneasy feeling I felt like everyone would be all right it was like it was in a nice hilton hotel yeah. a nice little shopping complex around it it was like just seemed like being at wembley and i'll tell you what these geezers they would have to be mad to try and kidnap you and kevin mitchell you know what i mean <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we, we joked if they kidnap kevin mitchell they give him back with money. Yeah. no ransom they just give us money with him right that's one thing i thought i was just like imagine if they fucking had kevin mitchell away like, i don't think they'd be he, he, I can remember seeing him in Marbella once 
And I'm like, geez, is it canon? You know yeah. I mean? yeah. <laughs> I'm like, they would definitely give him back, wouldn't they? Oh, for sure. At the matchroom gym, who do you reckon would the worst person would be that they could kidnap? Definitely Kevin Mitchell. Definitely Kevin. Yeah. Who would be second? Would have been Ted Cheeseman. Ted Cheeseman? Yeah. Yeah. Because he'd drive mad as well, yeah. Oh, bless him. He's not really boxing anymore, is he? No, I don't know what he's doing. I think he's he's doing all right outside of boxing. Yeah. He's got a little company, building company. So yeah. I hope he's doing well with it. But he was another mad one. Was he? Yeah. I, I just love your... I mean, I'm a bit, a bit of a matchroom fanboy, to be honest. I mean, I'm a massive boxing fan. I love I love all the characters in boxing. Because yeah. I feel like you don't get that in football no more. No, and I was yeah. always a big football fan growing up. You know, when I was younger, I loved Frank Bruno, loved Amir Khan at the Olympics. But it's only when I got older, I'm just like... I'm all about characters. I like a bit of personality, yeah. you know, and I just like the different... You know, characters like yourself, the strong, silent type. But then I also like, you know, I like enjoy watching Conor Ben. You know, just yeah. like the the absolute crushing it. Yeah, the crushing it in the gym, <laughs> crushing. But the yeah. confidence he comes out with, he goes, you know, still, you know, wearing my silk pajamas and all this. You know, yeah, and yeah. I love, I love that. I love the promoters. I love Eddie Hearn. I love Frank Warren for different reasons. Yeah, you don't really get that in football no more. But I love. I watch that matchroom gym. And I'm like, oh, that's something I can really get on board with. Yeah. You know, you've got you, I've always been a massive fan of. And then you've got the younger, uh, Kevin Mitchell through school. He, I went to school in Hornchurch. Oh, yeah. All with big West Ham fans. Yeah, yeah. So it was like, when I was in school, I was all going to Upton Park to watch him in his world title oh, fight. Of course, and, yeah. You know, Kevin Mitchell was the man. Yeah. And uh, so I've always, it's always been the match room fighters that I've, that, that sort of stable that you've got now. Got, I feel like I've got a, they're like my team, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, of course, yeah. Um, but I like watching the youngsters as well coming through. George, who we mentioned on the lift up here, yeah. George Lidard from Billericke, so not a million miles away from... No, of course, Jimmy Sainz as well coming through. Jimmy Sainz, yeah. yeah. Um, Fred Pullen. Yeah, Fred Pullen, yeah. Uh, nice kid, yeah. And Pr- then Kevin... Pretty boy. Yeah. Pretty is that, boy Fred, is that, yeah. Is that what they call him? I think that's what his mum calls him, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> but they're all, you know, and then you've got Kevin's son, uh, Connor. Yeah. And I just, I'm just like fascinated by it all, really. No, no, it's great. I mean, because for me, I used to spar so much with Kevin, just moving around and whatnot, yeah. and just to know him and and grow up being a fan of his as well yeah. throughout the amateurs, and then becoming his mate. And then I had a move around with Connor a couple of months back, yeah. and it was like it was just mad to to spar the father and son. How how similar does he fight to his old man? He's very very similar. Yeah, very um, very aggressive, very come forward. Yeah, um, I've done the same thing with Nigel Ben as well. Oh, Obviously, really? I've been a massive fan of Nigel Ben for since I knew about boxing. Um, so to spar so many rounds with Conor Ben, I said to Nigel, "I'm going to spar today. Please, can I just have one round with you at the end?" Yeah. And he was like, "Yeah." And I'm thinking, I might live to regret this. Did you? T- well, because he might not have the time. He's a bit older def- though. He's isn't definitely it? got the power still. Do you know really? I mean? Yeah. Power's but, not left um, him. The power. The power. I don't think the power ever does live with these these big punches. It's no. more just the timing, but. Yeah, it was just great to get in there and share a room with him. Yeah. Well, I, I went to see George uh, George Lidard fight at uh, on the Sonny Edwards undercard. Um, and that was that was great. Like, you know, he's won four, I think, uh, national titles. And, and do you know what I love about George? Um, I mean, I follow all the, the, those youngsters in the, in the matchroom gym. But what I've obviously met George and um, he just seems like such a lovely kid. Yeah. Got his head screwed on, yeah. you know. I really, really want him to do well, and I think, I think he will. I think he's, a, you know, he seems very strong for his age, you know. Yeah, do you know what these these ones coming through, uh, George and Jimmy, they've they're probably coming through at the best time because everything like the S and C, the nutrition, yeah, all the the mindset coaching and stuff, we're only like getting on board with it now fully. Mm-hmm. Like I've been pro thirteen years now, and it's only now that I'm fully immersed in all this stuff so they've got it from the get-go yeah so there's no way that like as long as they've got their head screwed on there's no way that they they can't succeed with the best around them and when you started your career then what all that is it you diet before a fight maybe but then yeah. in between you just cut out the chocolate bars just you? cut out the yeah. chocolate yeah no fizzy drinks on a day away you know and whatnot yeah what's your one like thing that you have after you have a fight what one thing do you eat i, I just love ice cream do you yeah i'm a massive ice cream <laughs> fan yeah yeah <laughs> It's my, it's my, um, my, my guilty pleasure. I'm really? Just, yeah, love ice cream. Mate, that is so funny. Because, like, look at you, like, tough boxer, 
And you're like, I just like ice cream, you know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> cool, that's because it's like that marshmallows or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What's that, sweets or whatever. Yeah. yeah, that's funny. And it must be cool, like, when you're obviously all in that gym together. Obviously, boxing is very much like a, uh, it's a singular thing, but there must be a bit of, you know, you're like a team, aren't you, really? Yeah. Even Tony, I think, would say now that this gym is probably the closest it's ever been. Like, really? for everyone being friends and pally. I don't, he obviously don't want us going out, getting on the piss together, but... Nah. He likes that we've got a good bond and like we support each other. Yeah. If Joe's fighting in Cardiff, he'll go down there. Yeah. Um, obviously not everyone come to Mexico because he didn't want everyone getting kidnapped, but more more often than not, that we, we all go and support each other, which is good. What was the first fight that you went to watch after the Canelo fight? Oh, it was Maisie, yeah, Katie Taylor, wasn't it? Katie Taylor, Katie Taylor in Taylor, Ireland. In Ireland, yeah. And that was the fight that I was like, oh, John Ryder, he's, he's got the Canelo money now. Do you know how I knew? What, the jacket? The teeth. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, he's got the Canelo money now. He's got the new railings. He's gone yeah. from Mexico straight to Turkey. <laughs> yeah. Man, they weren't even turkey teeth. Was they no, not? No, they was done in uh, Brentford. Oh, was they? Yeah. Doctor, As... Doctor Jesus. Shout out to him. Shout out to him. It sounds yeah. more glamorous if you say you went turkey, though, rather yeah. than Brentford. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you've got the quiff done all in Turkey, yeah. Yeah. No. All homegrown. Yeah. yeah. Oh, lovely. That seems to be the thing in the matchroom gym now. I think Joe Cordina's had them done. It's like, you know what I mean? Once you start doing well. Yeah. No, Ted had them done. Joe Cordina. Um, Felix Cash. Then Tony got them. And I was like, oh, oh, is I'm he? next. Yeah. Yeah. You've got to get them. So that, I mean, that's that's what they're all aiming for in the, in the it, gym, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it's like the hierarchy of the teeth. Forget yeah. the world title. <laughs> yeah. Can you get the teeth? Can you get your picture on the wall with the teeth in? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you think to yourself, like, how much that times are changing though? Know, because you think like 20 years ago, if a boxer would come up and just been like, I'm getting my teeth done. You know? Yeah. You get laughed out of the gym, wouldn't yeah, you? Yeah, of course, yeah. But I see some of my mates who like, you know, I think about one of my mates, he just like, he just looks like trouble. He's got a neck out that wide. Yeah. He speaks like this. <laughs> and he's like, he's got his teeth done. I'm just like 20 years ago, that wouldn't have happened. No, yeah, of course, you've got so much stick, wouldn't you? You would have got, yeah, 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 yeah. Times are changing, yeah. aren't they, really? Um, but yeah, no, I love that. I love that matchroom, Jim. You've also got Maisie Rose in there, who I really yeah. like watching. She's a great, great little fighter. Yeah, I was just watching her spar before I come, and honestly, so aggressive. So uh, just, but, but learning all the time and just exciting to watch. Yeah. And so what did you do before you got into the boxing, am I right and think you worked on the doors? I did for a while while I was while I was still boxing, yeah. Really? Yeah. Did, would people recognise you when you're on the doors? I'd be like, oh, you're that boxer. Yeah, odd, like not odd, like odd times. They odd would, person. Yeah, so someone who's a boxing fan. Yeah, boxing fans would, but um, no, it was just good fun. Enjoyed it. And what doors would would you work? I'd done a strip club in Allgate White. Really? So, yeah, that was actually my sponsor at the time, so. I was like, yeah, I wasn't fighting much, and it was like, just wait, come and do a bit of work with us, to get your license, and um, yeah, yeah, do a bit of door work. Yeah, I've been white a few times actually. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I recognised you. I'm sure, I chat chat, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Are you always still have a tab and all? Yeah, I think, I think yeah. I do, mate. Yeah, I think I might have done a run in there one night. Uh, no, I've definitely. Yeah, well, it's opposite that pub. What's it called? There's oh, a pub anyway. Yeah, I know, couple, yeah. I know the landlords because I've done some filming in there before. Oh, yeah. yeah. And he's like, you ever been over there? I was like, um, nah. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> yeah, I think my missus was me at the time. I'm like, nah, nah, I've never been in one of them, mate. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So you've done, done the doors. And how long was that for? I've I done it for about a year. A year? Yeah. Did you like it? I enjoyed, like, for me, I didn't, don't drink. Um, you never drank? Really go out. Yeah, not really a drinker. Nah. Never really, like, don't really go out. And it was good to, I don't know, like, we'd, We'd go over to Darren Barker's gym over the road in 12 Freeze and we'd all have a, like, a body spa before work. Yeah. And then go and get some dinner and have like a, a night on the doors. Like, so it's almost like laugh. you're having the night out but without the drinking. Yeah, you know just, I mean? yeah, no drinking, having a laugh with your mates and some of the best people I know that I worked in that door with, like still yeah. talk to them now. Really? And uh, yeah, there was some of them for that in Mexico for it. Like, yeah. Just just good, good people. You know, they, they, they really had your back. So it was like, yeah. I mean, they weren't we're, sticking you at the front door and you go and deal with that, you, you box like, most of them have boxed themselves in the past, and it was like, let the trouble, like, douse the fire, don't yeah. like, add fuel to it, do you know what I mean? I think with a doorman, if you're, if you're on a work in a door, I think you've got to be together. Yeah. You know what I mean? I've been in some nightclubs before where I'm like, I can see, like, there's a fight over there, that bouncer, 
he's getting weighed in yeah. and he's over there yeah. he's not really you've got to be like a band of brothers course, you know what yeah. I mean yeah. was there much trouble there no do you know what it was just more people like had too much and needed like helping carry yeah. out yeah just fucking pissed CD geezers yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah geezers with their knobs out and stuff yeah. put that away <laughs> and get out yeah like, fair enough well, and have you got uh, obviously now like you've had the you know you've had the the, the Canelo fight obviously now I'm guessing it's just like for you it's just big fights now yeah I mean what 35 now um, got another year in this maybe, maybe longer but how many fights do you reckon you got left I don't know just I, I'll purely go now by, fight by fight yeah. as long as I'm winning I'll keep going but yeah. there's got to be a, an exit strategy um, I always said I'll stop at 36 but who knows I don't want to I don't want to close the door on it at, at 36 mm. we'll see how it goes but as long as I'm winning, I'll I'll keep going. And if there's one person you could fight next, who would it be? Jared? I would love to fight Glovkin next. Yeah. Like I've been a fan of his for years. Um, so like Canelo, like Danny Jacobs, but I would love to to be the man he fights in his his last fight. Golovkin at the Emirates. Well, maybe Golovkin in Kazakhstan. Oh really? Yeah. Emirates would be a dream. Yeah. I mean, but if I got to Kazakhstan for it, I I gladly would. Really? Yeah. What if they offered you the Golovkin fight but at Spurs' stadium? And, and they were like, John, this is your last fight. Your last fight's got to be at Spurs' stadium. Would you do it? I would do it, but with one condition. I'd save up a massive shit. <laughs> <laughs> and do it in the centre of the pitch. I mean, I'm a Spurs <laughs> fan, so, oh, yeah. yeah. But, Got it. <laughs> to be honest, we are fucking useless at the moment. I mean, we had a, we had a quite a good run against Arsenal, as in finishing above you for a few years. But now, I, I just not even comparable. You know what I mean? Nah, I, just, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's your managers or your it's the ownership, your chairman, yeah, it's, it's the ownership. Yeah. They're, they're, you know, we've had we've had three of arguably three of the best football managers in the world: Pochettino, Mourinho, Conte. Yeah. If it ain't working with them. It ain't working yeah. with no one, you know what I mean? You've got to change the owners and change the whole culture. I think you had a, a bit of bad blood in the dressing room, though, didn't you, with like the Deli Alley at the time? Not that he was a, a bad bad mm. egg, he weren't like an abomination, was he? But he had his own little bit of his shoes. And I think, I think when ball, Poch he? left, a lot of them, they were so, lo so much loved him. Yeah. I think it just went, went right the other yeah. way, you know what I mean? It got a bit toxic. And of course, yeah. I mean, now I've, I've got no expectations if, if Harry Kane goes. Uh, I mean, by the time this comes out, he might may well have gone. You know, if we can get top half, yeah, I think in the current circumstances that will probably yeah. be. Are oh, you too big a club to to not be up there for that? Kind no, of stuff, well, we it? seem to be too more worried about now the music events and the boxing yeah. events. You know, know what I mean? So, yeah, but yeah, so one more with Golov, uh, well, one more with Golovkin, and then I mean, is there anyone domestically that domestically probably like Billy Joe? We could run that back a rematch yeah, Callum Smith maybe good. yeah I mean I'm not a light heavyweight and I've got no business being up a light heavyweight light but heavyweight now, I mean yeah. yeah I mean if there was something in the middle when we could meet there then yeah gladly mm. I'd love to run them back and um, and change the outcomes on both yeah and how does uh, like where do you see yourself like after boxing I think I'll get back into it I think I'll hopefully take over the reins with, with Tony and Kevin and do you see yourself coaching training, yeah potentially yeah? yeah I think I've I've had two great coaches in boxing and yeah. two great teachers and Tony especially has made me want to put back into boxing and continue and, and, and help the next breed of fighters yeah and I think obviously Tony Tony seems to have been a you know a, a, a great trainer for years I've enjoyed watching Kevin Mitchell's transition into the uh, being a you know yeah. being a trainer and I think it really suits him because he had the ups and downs of his careers you know of his career um, and I get the sense that he can I mean, he should have won a world title, really, oh, yeah, Kevin Mitchell, sure. um, without a doubt. But I feel like the amount of knowledge, knowledge that he's probably got from going through those highs and lows, to what he can teach fighters is, is probably really good. Yeah, I mean, they say sometimes like the most naturally gifted fighters can't teach it. Mm. Like, would Ronaldo be a good coach? But True, yeah. Kevin, watching Kevin now is he's just a natural at, at teaching and yeah. getting fighters to adapt and, and learn new things. He's he's in his element when he's when he's there yeah so you could really see yourself training after fight yeah I'd like to yeah I'd like to remain involved obviously I'd like the punditry stuff and mm. the glamorous stuff but yeah the I'll, easy stuff yeah <laughs> I would actually like to get in the gym with the fighters and, and put back because 
like I say, I've been lucky enough to be around Tony and my old coach Colin Lake, and I've been lucky enough to see the be friendly and be around like Ricky Burns and Kevin Mitchell throughout their yeah. careers, and see how hard work can get you to that level, like Ricky Burns, and see how being naturally gifted isn't enough. You need that dogged determination to get to get by and to to pursue your dreams. Yeah, does it does it scare you retiring because it's been part of your life for so long? Does it worry you? I think, yeah, it does, yeah. So, um, because to think now, like, oh, I'm retired now, I see it, it'd be like, th do you spiral out of control and just start doing things you've never done and boozing and whatnot? And yeah. it's, I don't think I ever would. I don't enjoy drinking. It's not something that my friends are going out and they go, oh, we're going for a beer. And I'm like, no, nah, I'd rather, <laughs> I'd rather, I would rather sit indoors with the kids and yeah. just like, watch a film, yeah. watch a rom com. Yeah. Yeah, you've never been a partier. <laughs> Yeah, never been like the the life and soul of party. Never been one to be like, oh, I can't. I need a pint today. Do you know what I mean? So, mm. yeah, I don't. I don't think it'd be in me now. Who knows? Though, if you had like five pints, you might be dancing on that bar over there. I you know definitely I mean? would be dancing on that bar. <laughs> 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 but I mean, you see it so much with like, I mean, not just fighters, but any sportsman. Once they retire, they, you know, where you've got the having to leave, live that you know that athlete lifestyle for years. To then lose that, it, you know, I suppose that is a big, big, you know, could be a big worry for a lot of sports. Yeah, no, definitely. I, I'm fortunate in a way where I've got a, I've got a great missus. Um, I've got two great kids who, yeah, like they're a joy to be around. So I'm not trying to escape that anytime. No. So if I'm if I'm not at the gym, I want to be home with them. I want to be yep. seeing what they're doing and probably driving them mad to an extent that yeah. they want me to leave them alone. But I just enjoy it. Yeah, and would would you let your kids fight? Definitely wouldn't let me little girl fight. Nah. She's too pretty for that. Yeah. But my, my son, I, I don't know. People say it and I've always been like, no, nope, no. Nope. But seeing him lately, he's so natural. Like, Really? He bought a little bag the other day and I was holding it and he's he's thrown like a one-two and then he's the bag swung and he's rolled under it and come back and hit again. And I'm like, yeah, fuck it, you might have something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Project Mayweather. But, yeah, <laughs> but it's like, my mister was saying, would you, would you let him box? I'm like, yeah. Would your missus? Would your missus let him? That's that's the. I think she probably would. Yeah. 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 She grew up with two like two brothers. I think one of them boxed. Right. Um, so I think she she would. But for me, it's like it'd be where do I let go? Where do I? Obviously, I'd want this him. To, I'd want him to train with Tony or Kevin. Yeah. People I know and I trust. But where do I go from being a former fighter and maybe a trainer myself to being his dad? Where do I? Where do I draw the line? Where do you draw the line? Yeah. Because you see that with. Uh, who was it, Kazagi? Yeah, his old man yeah. uh, trained him. Yeah. But it's quite unique, isn't it? I, you know, you see it so much sometimes with boxers, and you think if your dad's a boxer, sometimes they can be too involved or whatever. Yeah. It's very much, yeah, when, you know, where's, where is the line? Yeah, I think Nigel Ben's got a, a great way with it with Tony. Yeah. You just see, he, he's obviously in Australia. He leaves Connor to his, his own devices here and, and trusts in what they're doing. I want to get before we finish. I just want to get your views on uh, on Eddie Hearn, mate. Great geezer. Great geezer. Yeah, great for the sport. Um, just just a great bloke. And I'd like to you know what a game changer really. I think I he's think really he's brilliant. He's changed boxing in the UK yeah. and he's made he's made a lot of superstars out of the sport. Um, but he's made he's took boxing to a new level. He has. He's such a character. Mate, a proper character, yeah. And do you know what he is? He embraces the stick as well. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The things you do. He, I know he loves that. Like, yeah. Well, this is, this is what I'm going to ask you. Do you reckon he's seen my sketch of him recently? I hope so. I think he might. Do you know what? <laughs> I, had, I had a geezer message me from, uh, just known from, from around Brentwood. He's like, mate, I never knew he was a comedian. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, how do you know? He goes, oh, this thing's just been put in my WhatsApp group. Oh, yeah. And he goes, I'm a, Eddie Hearn's one of my old mates. Oh, really? <laughs> and I was like, oh, I'd love to know, you know, I'd love yeah. to know what he thought of it. But uh, I, hope he, uh, I hope he takes it the right way. Do you know what I mean? No, I'm sure he will. He's, um, do you know what? He's got a lot of wit. Um, yeah. And yeah, I don't think he takes anything too no, it's serious. Exactly, it's exactly that. And, um, I just, I, I would actually say Eddie Hearn's one of the, one of the main factors why I'm such a big boxing fan now. Yeah. Because he's such an engaging character, because he does take that stick. One of the things I love, and I love this about anyone, if you can laugh at yourself and take the piss yeah. out of yourself, I'm with you, man. 
You know what I mean? There's been people that I've not liked, and then I've heard them taking a piss at themselves, laughs and laughing at yeah. themselves. And I'm like, oh, actually, I, I really like you. Yeah, yeah of course. You yeah. know, and, and Eddie Hearn does that more than anyone. Yeah. You know, and that's why I think he's such an engaging character. And I think, I mean, there are people that love him. There are people that don't dislike him for whatever reason. I don't know why you wouldn't like him. But either way, he brings eyes to Matchroom and he brings eyes to boxing. Yeah. You no. know. And he's had a fantastic teacher and his dad as well, hasn't he? Barry's fantastic. been around for... God knows how long worked with so many great fighters and listen Eddie's obviously seen that growing up and yeah. it's, it's instilled in him listen we called him I know he gets called Silver Spoon but he has grafted his nuts off he, to get to where he is undeniable and listen he's taken matchroom and, and boxing from UK to across the world Australia he's now conquering the USA it's like mm. other promoters don't dream of doing that and I feel like he must use that as motivation because if when anyone ever says oh yeah but he got that because of his dad well, actually, if you see what his dad done and what he's gone on to achieve, yeah. he has just absolutely trebled, trebled it. You know what yeah. I mean? Oh, for sure, yeah. And I'm sure he's used that as motivation to, yeah, to build build what he has built today. Yeah. No, because he, he could easily, listen, he hasn't got to do this, has he? He could no. sit at home and be a multi-millionaire doing nothing. Mm. Um, but he's, he's, he's took this job on and he's he's took it to massive new heights yeah got people like yourself taking the piss out of him yeah. I would actually love to see him in this chair you there dressed as him well listen him. do you know what they uh, so a good mate of mine Johnny Fisher had a run yep. for ball Bosh. they was doing Bosh yeah they were doing a little uh, match with a little video or whatever or uh, down at they were doing a ticket giveaway at the Rabbits in Stapleford Abbots oh, yeah. not too far from yeah, the gym yeah. uh, from your gym um, and they were like I said oh listen I'm, I'm going to come down and see you boys they were like, we told Matchroom, they want you to come down dressed as Eddie. Oh, really? <laughs> I, went, I went, mate, I said, I don't think I could do that. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I don't, nah, I don't think, I, yeah, I was like, I don't think I've got Amy. I was like, I'll be down there. Yeah. They was like, oh, well, they all loved it, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, but I can't, you know, but doing my sketches yeah. is one thing, but then walking into a place and being like, you know, I'm Eddie Earth. <laughs> <You know what Yeah. laughs> I was like, no, I don't think I've got that in me, man. Um, but I remember when he first, uh, when he was first putting on the bigger fights, um, David Hay, I remember giving him stick of like, why you got to try and be front and centre and all that. But actually, it's genius what he's done because he's become such a big personality and so famous in his own right yeah. that, that actually him being as big as he is, it makes everyone that he's signed with him, it makes them bigger. Yeah. You know? No, he's, um, he's got a fantastic way he's... You see him get to a press conference and he's yeah. there and he's just chatting to him and then the camera comes on for the press conference and he just, the, the way he... Switches it he, on. Yeah, the way he switches it on and what he's got in his head is like, I just think, how do you remember all that shit? I actually, when I watched the uh, AJ White press conference, I, like from a comedian's point of view, someone being on stage, I'm like, that was so quick, man. Yeah. So, so White goes to him, what does... What does AJ's bars taste like? <laughs> and then he goes, Eddie Hearn goes, well, on August the 12th, you might find out. <laughs> yeah. No, that's it. He's, he's quick, mate. He's so, so quick, quick weird. Yeah. I'm like, that was, that was as, that was as sharp as anything. Yeah. You know? and imagine if he missed that opportunity and like, it would just be full on deaf ears, wouldn't it? And yeah. It would just be like, the reel of Eddie being mugged off, but he's come back and it's like, it's a highlight reel, isn't it? Well, listen, I'm sure that when he finishes his, Boxing promotion career, he's got, he's got, he's got a career in stand up. Mate, for sure. His outtake is going to be unbelievable, isn't he? At yeah. the end of his career. Yeah. Oh, fantastic, <laughs> mate. Fantastic. Oh, go on then. Oh, go on then. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there you go. But John, thank you so much for joining me, no, mate. Thank you. I'm a fan. Um, watch all your stuff. Driving through uh, Bermondsey, I was thinking of the meal sketch. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. I have to keep my head down when I drive through. <laughs> yeah, Bermondsey. I bet. Yeah. I've got another meal one coming, but. Uh, no, I think the majority of Millwall fans loved it. I, I, funnily enough, though, I got the most death threats ever oh, really? when I put the Millwall one out. Yeah. Yeah, the Millwall one is like, they've got a lot of fans who've got great sense of humour. They've got some people that have... Twisted. Yeah. <laughs> got, a screw, got a screw loose. Yeah. You know what I mean? But that's why they're so successful at beating people up. So. That's it, yeah. Not like Arsenal. We'll see them having a punch-up the other day. No. Embarrassing. Where was it? In the USA. Oh, was it? I say they're all Yanks, hopefully, that there's all fighting, but it, Maybe. it was embarrassing. They need you, John. Oh, nah. 
But you're too, you're too, you're not, too busy doing it yeah, proper in a boxing ring. Too busy doing it properly, not on the terraces. Yeah, exactly. But no, uh, mate, likewise, man. I've always been such a massive fan of yours. So, you know, great to finally meet you. And um, yeah, honoured to have you on the pod, mate. And, no, thank um, you. Can't wait for you to announce your next fight. Uh, I'll be there, mate. And um, yeah, hopefully, you know, another few big ones. And then you can go sit on the beach somewhere and just enjoy life. I hope so. Get that big one at the Emirates one day. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Or Tottenham. Yeah, listen, <laughs> even if it's at the Emirates, I'm there, mate, in an yeah. Arsenal shirt. No, I love it. With Gorilla on the back. That's it. So, I've just pulled one with Rice on the back just to piss off the West Ham fans, yeah. Yeah, that must be sore yeah. for them, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. But there you go. But John, thank you so much, no, mate. thank you. Really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, I'm sure I'll see you soon. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Thanks, guys, for listening again. Uh, another great episode in the can. We're rocking and rolling now on YouTube. Make sure to tell your friends, tell your family that we're now on YouTube, That Just James Show. Uh, and one more time, thank you very much, John, for coming down to deepest, darkest South London and, uh, and being part of that Josh James show. And we'll see you all again next week.